Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and we're in the book of Hosea, going through the Bible for the fourth time here on Scripture Verse by Verse, the fourth time in 35 years. Hosea chapter 10, verse 1 is where we resume, so get your Bible. The Scripture Verse by Verse website found at thebibleversebyverse.com is where you will find all four series going through the Bible. And you choose the series, the book, the chapter, the section, click and listen. So all you have to do and all you need to bring is your Bible to the Bible, verse by verse dot com. So, Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus name. Amen. Hosea chapter 10, verse one. Hosea says this or God says this through Hosea. Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself according to the multitude of his fruit. He hath increased the altars according to the goodness of his land. They have made handsome images. Israel had every advantage that a People could possibly have been the children of God from the very beginning. It had the means, therefore, to become strong through holiness. But instead, it became selfish and godless. Actually, the more it prospered, the more unholy it became. Verse 2, their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. They were deceitful. Outwardly, they worshipped God, but they loved their idolatry and their pagan ways. And of course, God saw through the facade. Verse 3, For now they shall say, We have no king, because we feared not the Lord. What then should a king do to us? When Israel is conquered by Assyria as judgment for rebelling against God, they will have no king. If they would have been devoted to God, then he would have been their king, and he would have protected them also. For they have spoken words, swearing falsely, and making a covenant. Thus judgment springeth up like hemlock in the furrows of the field. Israel made treaties with other nations, but they were not faithful to keep those treaties. Their whole sense of justice was poisoned and perverted because of their rebellion against God. You know, if, if, somebody, if somebody is not ruled by God, if somebody doesn't have respect for Almighty God and put him first, you are an absolute fool. You are a simpleton to put your trust in them to do the right thing by you. If they don't care about their creator, then they're not going to care about anything else except themselves. They are on the throne of their life, first and foremost. Now, it may look like somebody else is or something else is, but no, they are on the throne of their life. Israel could not be trusted by other nations to be faithful because they were unfaithful to God. You can't trust someone who isn't sold out to God. Five, the inhabitants of Samaria shall fear because of the calves of beth Avon, for its people shall mourn over it and its priests that rejoiced on it for the glory of it, because it is departed from it. Verse 6, It shall be also carried unto Assyria for a present to King Jerob. Ephraim shall receive shame, and Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel. Israel will eventually get over their idolatry and they will become ashamed of it, but not until they see how foolish they had been to worship so-called gods other than the Lord God. 
Once that point is driven home through their punishment, they'll be cured. And when they're cured, and when they see the error of their way, the sinfulness of their way, it's going to be an embarrassment to them. God's people do not glory in their sinful lives. Their sinful lives previous to Christ are an embarrassment to them. Seven, as for Samaria, her king is cut off like the foam upon the water. The kingdom of Israel will float away. They were unstable. Their sin made them unstable. The Bible says the nations which forget God will be cast into hell. Eight, the high places also of Avon, the sin of Israel, shall be destroyed. The thorn and the thistle shall come up on their altars, and they shall say to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills fall on us. When God's wrath hits with all of its fury, the nations will cry out in despair for the mountains to fall on them. They will wish for death, in other words, but it won't come. People in hell wish for annihilation, but it never comes, and it never will come. They just want to go out of existence. But they can't, and they won't. The punishment for rejecting Almighty God and then rejecting His mercy through Jesus Christ is an eternity of hellfire pain for your sins. Nine, O Israel, thou hast sinned from the days of Gabeah. There they stood the battle in Gabeah against the children of iniquity, did not overtake them. <clears throat> the Israelites had been guilty of immorality while in Gabeah, and they were punished because of it. If they had remembered the lesson God taught them there, they wouldn't have been in so much trouble in Hosea's day. How quickly they forgot. And whenever we forget God, the next step is punishment. Verse 10. It is in my desire that I should chastise them, and the people shall be gathered against them when they shall bind themselves in their two furrows. The two foundational sins of Israel, talking about the northern kingdom, were they rejected God and they rejected the royal line of David. When they rejected God and they rejected the royal line of David, those basic rebellious sins exploded into a multitude of other sins that led to their downfall. But that's where it began. It always begins with rejecting the lordship of Almighty God. 11. <clears throat> and Ephraim is like a heifer that is taught and loveth to tread out the grain. But I passed over upon her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride. Judah shall plow and Jacob shall break his clods. Up to this point, Israel had been as content as a heifer eating grain. But that's about to end. They're about to become servants, working hard for the benefit of heathen nations. 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. God is telling Israel to do what is right. If they would only change their sinful ways, God would bless them. Ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. Israel had been living a lie, they thought they could reject God and get by on their own. Their own wisdom, their own power. Now they're beginning to see how foolish that was. They had no wisdom or power apart from God. If ye abide in me, Jesus said, and I abide in you, 
That's where the blessing comes. Apart from me, you can do nothing, Jesus said. And when for Israel in the Old Testament, goes for us today. Unless you and I abide in Christ, number one, by being saved, number two, by putting him first in your life and confessing when you fail, you can do nothing, nothing worthwhile, nothing of lasting value, and in the long run, it will destroy you, sometimes sooner rather than later. 14. Therefore shall a tumult arise among thy people, and all thy fortresses shall be spoiled, as shall men spoiled Beth Arbel in the day of battle. The mother was dashed in pieces upon her children. So shall Bethel do unto you because of your great wickedness. And in a morning shall the king of Israel utterly be cut off. Bethel was in the center of idolatry. I should say Bethel, Bethel was the center of idolatry. That's where the idolatrous religion was first set up when Israel North split from the South and walked away from the true religion of God and the priesthood. They set up their idols in Bethel. And that particular sin spread to many other sins as well. And the punishment for this is going to be devastating. The Northern Kingdom is going to go out of business. That's what happens when the patience of God towards sinners runs out. They go out of business. We'll stop right there. If you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can be. Pray for me. Pray for God's word. And when you take a break from studying at the thebibleversebyverse.com, if you would, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. I'd appreciate it. Let's get out God's word together. As much as we can, to as many as we can, for as long as we can, the whole counsel of God, without watering it down. This has been Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. See you next time, right here in the book of Hosea. So long.